Hey everyone, this is Ron Alexander, and today we're going to pick up on day two of our introductory series on power skills. Yesterday, I posted it. Excuse me, I posted an introductory video regarding this power skills program. Power skills is a lean management, mentoring, and coaching program directed toward up leveling the skills of your frontline managers and supervisors so they can greatly leverage the productivity of your existing workforce. And during yesterday's video, I said I would tell you why this is important. And I can easily give you the reason why up-leveling your skills is important in one sentence. We must up-level our skills because if we don't, we're leaving money on the table. So how much money are we leaving on the table, you ask? Well, there's credible research that I've read that tells me that it could be 20 to 25% of profit. Does your company, do the people who own your company want this profit? I suspect that they do. And the good news is that this missed profit can be reclaimed by simply up-leveling our management and supervisory skills. Large investments in infrastructure are not required. And currently, about 80% of the managers and supervisors in manufacturing do not have the skills required to implement lean management. But these skills can be easily acquired with training. In manufacturing, in the manufacturing sector, we all know that there are seven classes of what we call lean manufacturing waste, but there are also management waste. We could call them lean management waste if you wanted to, but usually we walk right by these each day without giving them a second thought. We know they're there, but we never do anything about them. On the accompanying slide that I'm about to put up, I've listed 17 examples of management waste that I'm familiar with. Few companies have programs directed toward minimizing these wastes. And this is the omission that creates an opportunity for you to improve your company's performance. And that's why this matters. There's unrealized profit laying on the table for management waste. And every manager and every supervisor should feel a responsibility toward addressing these lean management waste. Power skills, our power skills program up levels two categories of supervisory skills that address lean management waste. First, there are verbal communication skills, including coaching. And second, there are continuous improvement skills. For the rest of the time today, we're gonna to be talking about the first of these two kinds of power skills, the verbal communication skills. You have no doubt heard the saying, that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I used to hear that all the time when I was a kid, but that is an absolutely false statement. The right words, the wrong words in certain situations can absolutely alter a person's life. I think at this point in time, we all know that. So words are very powerful. And in the work environment, Words can either encourage and motivate, or they can call bitterness and discouragement. At a minimum, they can greatly affect an individual's or a team's productivity. And it is a manager or supervisor's responsibility to know how to avoid these negative interactions that detract from a positive and productive work environment. Our power skills program our power skills gives your managers and your responsibilities a toolbox full of verbal communication skills that will give them the confidence to positively deal with whatever is thrown at them during the day. That is how you maximize productivity. 
Now on this slide, I've put up some examples of some of the tools that we use in power skills for improving productivity. This is not a, an inclusive, all-inclusive list, and it will vary somewhat depending on the needs of an individual client. But there are a lot of these skills. There are many applications in manufacturing for improved skills, improved communication skills. Way more than I have time to list right now, now but I'm gonna generalize, consolidate this list. First of all, the supervisor needs to learn to avoid using words, phrases, or tone, tone, excuse me, tonal qualities that are toxic, demeaning, or otherwise not constructive. Our words matter. The supervisor should learn to understand that the problem is always the situation and not the person. Do not make the person the problem, make the situation the problem. Third one, the supervisor must learn to immediately default to collaboration, mentoring, coaching, or training instead of arguing or explaining. If you're arguing or explaining, you're losing. Also, the skill, the supervisor should become skilled <clears throat> at using labels and our mirrors to gain information or generate a strategic pause before reacting to something. One of the most profitable skills that a manager or supervisor can have is to know how to use a coaching mindset instead of the traditional authoritarian mindset. And here's one example, one scenario. An employee named Joe clocks in late and it's not the first time. He's not there to run his machine and it creates a problem. So the supervisor confronts Joe and in so doing, I think there's three paths that supervisor might take. First scenario, the authoritarian scenario that we know about is that Joe gets a write-up or a warning put in his file about clocking in late. Joe is understandably angry about this because he knows that the company is gonna be building a file that can eventually get rid of him or further penalizing, and he doesn't like that. And so he sulks all day and he goes around to the other employees, telling them how bad he's mistreated and how unfairly the company's been. So when this happens, Joe is unproductive. The people he's talking to all day are unproductive. Joe's not doing anything to improve his behavior or his attendance. He's not taking any constructive steps. And he's bugging, he's taking HR's time and the supervisor's time. And if it's a union plant, there may even be a grievance attached to this that takes up even more of everyone's time. Next scenario to consider is simply ask Joe if he can be on time tomorrow. Joe, can you start getting here on time? And Joe is always gonna say yes. He says, I'll make sure that I'm here on time tomorrow. Well, if you've had power skills training, you understand that that's what we call a counterfeit yes. Joe is just telling the boss what he thinks the boss wants to hear so everybody can go on about their business. Joe is just getting the boss off his back. But Joe likely intends to be on time tomorrow, but he's really not doing anything to make a change. And most of us have been in manufacturing long enough to know that when nothing changes, then nothing changes. But there's a third scenario. It's the coaching scenario. In the coaching scenario, the supervisor takes Joe through the four coaching steps, the GROW coaching model, where the supervisor reaffirms that Joe is not the problem. The problem is the situation. Joe wasn't here to operate his machine. That's the situation. And Joe is going to develop his own strategy 
on how to get to work on time, and then he can kind of commit to his strategy. So now, once that happens, Joe has a plan. He has a viable strategy for getting to work on time. The important thing is that Joe has ownership of this plan because it is Joe's plan. It's Joe's idea. It's not the supervisor's plan or the company's plan. And Joe has made a commitment to that plan. An employee will support what they help create. So Joe has this plan. It's his plan, and he's going to support it. So we talked about these three scenarios. So which one of these things is most likely to result in Joe showing up on time from now on? It's the third scenario. But how many of your supervisors or managers today are skilled at taking an employee through the four coaching steps? And how many, if they know about the steps, how many are actually doing that? With Joe being on time, Joe not spending the shift bending everyone's ear about how mistreated he's been, which one of these which one of these scenarios is most likely to get results that put parts on the floor at the end of the ship? Where are the most parts coming from? Which scenario? So I hope you're beginning to see how your organization could benefit from a new strategy. Now, tomorrow is when we talk about the continuous improvement strategies. Continuous improvement is what I call the money shot. There are obvious advantages to becoming more skilled with words, but unfortunately, it's difficult to tie a dollar amount to any of these verbal strategies. Continuous improvement strategies are usually tied to a directly, excuse me, usually directly tied to a goal or objective that has an outcome that can be translated into dollars. So watch for the tomorrow's video when we start talking about continuous improvement strategies. So that's it for today. If I receive positive response to these videos based on comments I received, so please comment. Uh, if I get a positive response, I'll continue to post more of these videos with a lot more detail than I can in this introductory series. So thank you for watching. Please comment if you are watching on LinkedIn. And I will also be putting these videos on my YouTube channel. So if you happen to be watching on YouTube, please do the thing. Comment, like, and subscribe. So thank you for watching and you have a great day.